Many might not be familiar with the term yellow journalism, but I'm sure the terms sensationalized media and exaggerated headlines ring a bell. Joseph Pulitzer, most popularly known for the Pulitzer Prize, purchased the New York World in 1883. Due to big changes in the format, presentation, and content of the newspapers, Pulitzer increased the circulation of the New York World from 15,000 to 600,000, making the New York World the largest newspaper in the U.S. at the time. Q. William Randolph Hearst Hearst's empire still exists today, with as many magazines, newspapers, and broadcasting stations. When Hearst purchased the New York Journal from Pulitzer's brother in 1895, a massive circulation war emerged between Pulitzer's New York World and Hearst's New York Journal. The term yellow journalism was coined during the circulation war when Hearst hired Pulitzer's drawer of the popular comic strip, The Yellow Kid, for an insane amount of money. Cuba, which at the time was colonized by Spain, was rich with coffee, tobacco, and sugar. U.S. had been attracted to Cuba for a long time, so when the USS Maine mysteriously sank in the Havana Harbor in Cuba, Pulitzer and Hearst jumped to use the story as a way to sell even more newspapers. Using yellow journalism, the two newspapers made rash headlines that ignited the public to think that the sinking of the USS Maine was done by the Spanish. Other newspapers, however, were more reserved in blaming the Spanish. For example, this newspaper from Alabama stated in its headline that the attack on the USS Maine may have been by the Spanish, later writing that there were rumors and strong beliefs that the attack may have been by the Spanish, but never full out blaming the Spanish for sinking the American boat. When William Hearst's illustrator, Frederick Remington, was sent to Cuba and reported back that there wasn't anything happening there worth making news about, Hearst said this legendary quote, You furnish the pictures, I'll furnish the war. Remember the Maine to hell with Spain became a common saying in newspapers and on the street. Because the New York Journal and the New York World were the top two selling newspapers in the country, when the public heard that the sinking of an American boat was a work of enemies, which was never proven to be true, the government was pressured to do something. In April of 1898, President William McKinley declared war against Spain. The two newspapers continued to milk stories from the Spanish-American War, sending out war correspondents to write exaggerated stories of battles and the conditions in Cuba. One example is Richard Harding Davis, a journalist from the New York Journal. He was a good friend of Theodore Roosevelt, a colonel at the time, and wrote the famous article about the Rough Riders battle on San Juan Hill. The truth was that it was actually the Buffalo Soldiers that did most of the heavy fighting on San Juan Hill, but after that dramatic battle, Teddy Roosevelt was considered a war hero and became president after President McKinley's assassination. James Creelman, a reporter for Pulitzer's New York World, wrote a piece on yellow journalism, and he seems to advocate this exaggerating style of writing. Quote, if the war against Spain is justified in the eyes of history, then yellow journalism deserves its place among the most useful instrumentalities of civilization, end quote. Yellow journalism is still thriving today, though perhaps not as blatant as the false headlines in the New York Journal or the New York World. This is also not to say that all media is corrupt. In fact, the media has the job of the gatekeeper and has brought many important things to the public's eye, such as pollution, transportation safety, and prescription medication. Because of the public's reception and concern about these topics covered by the media, there have been many actions taken by the government to confront these problems. In this New York Post front page, a freelance journalist captures a man's last seconds of life as he tries to climb out of the way of an incoming subway. Indeed, the death of this man is big news. However, there are a million other more respectable ways to convey the message other than pasting in superimposed letters, quote, this man is about to die. Doomed. End quote. I am not denying that Teddy Roosevelt was a brave leader or that the sinking of the USS Maine was important. However, I believe that the newspaper is a huge factor of what the people think. Moreover, what the people say, the government has to react to, and what the government does, the media has to report. It's all a cycle, and in the Spanish-American War, the cycle was corrupted by sensationalism.